Okay, thank you very much indeed for getting back so promptly. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce this section, which is very different from what we've had this morning. It's going to be a very fact, fact finding. Uh, it's like the gathering here at the top table, so it's really extended. It's probably much more interesting than what Ony and I can say. Anyhow, um, Partnership Iron, this was introduced uh, mainly through uh, the work through Dr. Joyce Epstein, who prompted us to do this. And uh, we now have this partnership schools lineup, and Anya has been pretty busy in the last year, particularly in managing this project to some fruition. And we've certainly arrived at a very good stage, and we thought that we should impart where we've got to at this stage. So Anya will make the presentation, and then we can have some questions after that. Okay, good afternoon. I hope lunch was okay for everybody and all not ready to fall asleep. Um, yeah, as Robert said, some people were here last year and they would have remembered Joyce Epstein, who we had as our keynote speaker in the morning, who came over from Johns Hopkins University in, um, in America. And she presented a challenge to us, really, that as um, our conversations around parental involvement needed to move on and that parents have to be involved for a purpose, not just to be involved. And the one thing that struck me when she was speaking was that parents need to be involved to improve children's education success. So it's not good enough just to be coming in and you know attending maybe the play, although that's very important, but the learning in the home and parents' involvement in that was key to, to children's success in school. So she left um, after the conference and then we, I suppose, had to look at where we were going to go with the project ourselves. And she certainly challenged the National Parents' Council to move it forward. So we, we took the challenge and we invited three schools, which we have here this morning, um, to pilot, I suppose, although I don't like that word because it sounds like it's going to come to an end and we're hoping it won't come to an end, but try out the action team partnerships that Joyce had talked about um, when she was at our conference. So my job now, just before the three schools talk about um, how it's gone for them in the year, is just to, I suppose, remind people who were here last year exactly what the project is, and also for people who weren't here last year to give you a really short oversight of what, what the project involves. Okay, so wh what's the background? Why did we decide to do it? Um, Decades of research has shown that when parents are in involved, students do better, and I think um, Charles this morning really did show and illustrate that. But, you know, there's very significant research that shows that when parents are involved, children's grades are higher in school, attendance is better, there's increased motivation and better self-esteem, there's lower rates of suspension, there's decreased use of drugs and alcohol, and there's fewer instances of violent behaviour. And when you pull all that together, and when I first saw this research, the thing that just struck me is if parental involvement means all of these improvements, why wouldn't we do it? We have to do it, and we have to do it in a very um, structured way and make sure that parents have all the opportunities um, available to them to be more involved. And as Charles also kind of challenged us this morning, I think, as in the fact of sometimes we think it might be the socioeconomic reasons or different ethnic backgrounds that maybe be barriers to involvement. And certainly why there's, the, there's factors there that it's, it's not who parents are, but what they do, I think, of Charles's um, speech this morning that really struck me. It's not who you are as a parent, but it's what you do with your child that makes a difference. So I suppose Joyce very much challenged us to reframe the discussion. As an organisation, what we'd been very concentrated on was parental involvement. Parents have to be involved. And that was the words we were using all of the time, was parental involvement. But Joyce kind of um, challenged us to reframe this and said, well, actually, it's not just about parental involvement. It's about partnership in schools, that it's about school decision making being done in a partnership way, that everybody's involved in the discussions and that everybody's involved in the planning and that everybody's involved in how the plans are implemented within schools. And when everybody's involved, you have better goals and, and better facilities to reach those goals because everybody is working together to achieve them. Um, so it's, it's not about parental involvement anymore. It's about how parents fit into that partnership within a school. 
Part of Joyce Epstein's work then, and, and I suppose the central bit of it, is the action team for partnership. And the schools are going to talk about their, act their action teams for partnerships in their schools. But basically the action team for partnership is established in a school under this model and they do the planning for what activities are going to happen throughout the year. All of the activities are planned, are planned with the view of better outcomes for students. So none of the activities are planned just for the purpose of running the activity. There has to be a clear goal that this is going to pr produce better outcomes for children in the school. And they look at the six types of involvement under this um, partnership. So the six types of involvement is parenting, so actually increasing parents' capacity to support their children, communicating, making sure that communication within the school between parents, children, community and school is improved, volunteering, making sure that parents have opportunities to volunteer within the schools, bringing their talents to the schools, supporting parents to, for learning at home, um, decision making, making sure, and the ATP is I suppose really key in that, that the, the decision making is shared, that it's a partnership approach. And then finally collaborating with the community, that the community that schools sit in within have a huge amount to offer schools. And often we, we reach out to the community in terms of can they fund a particular project or could they provide volunteers. But the Action Team for Partnership offers a community person on the ATP an opportunity to be involved in actually the planning and decision making about what the schools are doing. So they're able to bring different skills to the process. So the Action Team for Partnership is an action arm of the School Board of Management. So um, they're a doing committee. They're not really much of a talking committee. The plan is made very early on and then they're a doing committee. The possible members come from the school staff, the principal, which must be on the action team for partnership but shouldn't be the chair of it, parents, community members, students and board of management members. So there's mixtures of all of those and you might hear some detail about how these schools chose their membership on it. The action team for partnership develops a plan based on the school plan. So it's not pulling goals together that they just decide. They have to take what already is the existing school plan and take from those goals. So each school has a school plan each year as to what their priority is going to be. The action team for partnership looks at that plan and takes goals from it that will be improved by a partnership approach. So some of them won't be, they're very specific and a partnership approach won't really add any value for children. But some of them give key value by having a partnership approach to them. There's four goals every year, two must be academic, one's a behaviour goal and one's a partnership goal. And you will hear the very concrete examples of those from the three schools coming up. What's really important with the goals as well is that they're specific goals, that they're timed and they're measured. So you wouldn't just say things are going to get better. You're going to say what's going to get better and by how much it's going to get better and when it will get better by. So by the end of the year, you'll be able to evaluate did this make a difference for children? And I think, again, that was what Charles was talking about this morning, that when we're putting in implementation plans, we need to make sure that they're having the effect that we want to. So this is all part of the action team approach. So the current situation, and I'm going to hand over um, following this to Anna Mae, but the current situation is we had Joyce over last year at our conference 2013. Following that conference, Joyce stayed with us the Sunday after that conference, and she trained the staff our MPC staff, our MPC trainers, and also members of the um, Irish Primary Principal Network, as you'll know from this morning, who are partnering MPC in this project. We then got our three current schools that we um, have been our guinea pigs for this year. And um, as you know this morning, we've launched the Partnership Schools Island as a project, as a joint project between ourselves and IPPN. And we've now got six new schools identified for next year. So we're building it slowly. We, there's, there's kind of, um, you, you kind of get carried away with the enthusiasm of this project. And you kind of thought, we'll get loads of schools. But the first year is important for schools. So we want to make sure that in the first year, schools are very well supported. So we're doing it in a, in a very phased basis. But by the, end of, by the time we're here next year, we'll have nine schools that have gone through the process and a better plan of where we're going through it. But I'm not going to take any more of your time up because I just this is really just a brief kind of what this is about. But I'm going to hand over to Anna May now, um, who's going to talk about the IPPN's involvement in the project. Mm. OK. 
Okay, thank you very much, Anya. Um, I must say it's a privilege to be here to um, speak with you to this afternoon. And uh, I would just like to, on behalf of the IPPN, thank Anya and everybody involved in the NPC um, for uh, giving us this opportunity today to actually share with you, first of all, a couple of sentences about the IPPN and what the IPPN does. And secondly, to explain to you why we, find, we found that this project was important enough to become uh, or to go into a partnership with the NPC. Uh, of course, with um, the kind of arguing skills that Anya has, you can imagine that we didn't stand much hope in this. But anyway, um, as regards the IPPN, and I'm sure most of you are aware of what we're doing already, uh, for those of you who don't know a lot about our organisation, we're the Irish Primary Principles Network. And I suppose what we are actually aspiring to is that principals become exemplary leaders in their school communities. And in that, we always talk about takiot and mishnak and spragu, which of course are support and courage to act and inspiration and aspirations for the future. And all of that is very important to us in our organization. And our values, you won't be surprised to see, are respect and trust and of course, everything done in the most professional way possible. Um, at the heart, of what we do are the children in our schools and everything we take on actually surrounds the children in our schools so we always keep those as our focus. Uh, we provide uh, go our goals actually break into three areas so we have supports and services which provide school leaders with a continuum of professional development and this to us is very important because as well as children learning in our schools we like that the principal and the teachers are learning and we also absolutely want the parents to be learning with us and indeed all the members of the school community so providing proper professional development is extremely important to us uh, we also offer professional guidance and networking opportunities and we find that sometimes being a principal in a school can be a lonely place to be. So the support of our colleagues is consistently important to us and to actually encourage that among school principals around the country. There are only 3,300 of us so I know that sounds a lot but it's not when you're spread all over the country. So providing that support for principals and encouraging them to network amongst each other uh, really, really enhances the work that we do in our schools every day. Uh, we want to be a trusted voice for children's welfare and we want to influence uh, policy development and to that end we work very closely with the Department of Education and Skills and are very privileged to do so and we also work with all the partners in education, the management bodies, the INTO and of course the NPC and all the bodies to try to make sure that we're all working together to provide what we consider to be a, a fabulous education for our children here in Ireland. Um, and then of course there's the infrastructure and like every other organisation we have to make sure that we have enough money to see the organisation and what it does safely into the future. So that's enough about the IPPN, moving on to the business of today. Um, the IPPN decided, listened to Anya and um, listened to her very, very enthusiastic uh, talk about action team partnerships and Maria Doyle, who's presently the Deputy President of the IPPN and myself, attended Dr Joyce Epstein's talk he, uh, in the NPC's conference in 2013, around this time last year. And as usual, when you're a school principal, you take off your IPPN hat and you say to yourself, how can this benefit my school? And from the very moment that Joyce began to speak last year, I could just see instant benefit for my school. And I always look, what will work for the children in, a, in my school? What will work for the school in general? And after that, if it's a good thing, I throw back on my IPPN hat and I try to spread that a little bit. And I was instantly taken. And the reason that I was instantly taken by this project is because there it is up on the screen behind you, children. Children are our focus. They always have to remain our focus. Otherwise, there's absolutely no point in anything we do. And what the Action Team Partnership did for us was it brought in inclusivity. 
real inclusivity, not token inclusivity. And I have found over the years in my school that, you know, our parents association are a wonderful body. The parents in our school are 100% supportive. They're, they're wonderful, wonderful people. And as a school, we certainly could not survive without that support. But what they did for us, was it a kind of tokenism? Did they come and glance quickly over a policy? Or did they help us with fundraising? And of course they did, and assist us with events. And that's wonderful, and we still need that in an ongoing way. But what the Action Team Partnership does is that it brings in real inclusivity. It puts people sitting around in a circle discussing the school plan. And that is very, very powerful. It also brought in support, which we need at all times in school. You who, and I know most of you are parents and teachers amongst you, will know that schools are absolutely mad, ridiculous, hectic places. And the pace is so fast. So we need all the support we can get. It also put the focus on the school community. And in our school, we look at children first. And then we look at staff and parents, and then we look at the wider school community. And yes, that includes the Board of Management, it includes the Parents Association, it includes visitors to the school, it includes people from outside agencies, and it includes people from the local area. And we found that Action Team Partnerships brought all of these people together and put them into a room. And that just wasn't happening heretofore. Um, it brought different perspectives. Now this is particularly powerful because as a school principal, and I've been one for about 14, 15 years now, I don't like to think about it, I'm getting old very rapidly. But as a school principal, you are so busy and so focused and so, so constantly on the run that sometimes the best thing in the world that can happen to you is to be slightly pulled back. And just as an example of that, and it'll, it'll seem trivial to you, but it was really important to me at the time. We were obviously producing school newsletters, and we weren't getting them out just enough. We should have had a three-week period. We were leaving it monthly or five weeks. And we were giving out this document. And now looking back on it, I'm sure parents looked at this and said, I'll read that later. Okay, and that's totally understandable. I'm a parent myself and I get these in my house and I do say I'll read that later. And what the parents on my action team partnership said to me, two extremely wise women, second class parents, they said, there's too much, we never read it. And they were absolutely right. And so they just suggested sending it out more often. They suggested putting it in a different color. They suggested changing the print. They suggested all those things. And you might say, well, is that not pretty obvious? No, it's not, because schools worked so quickly and at such a pace that you miss all these little things. And I believe that our school newsletter is a much more successful venture over the course of this year just because of that and just because of those people being given the opportunity to say that to me and also because of a very, very patient secretary over there to the extreme left. Um, moving on, um, informal communication, the chance to sit and chat. The principal, the teachers, the parents, the children, senior students, um, the um, local representative from the business community informal chat, but also professional dialogue about the school plan, what are you doing, how is it going, and how can we help? And that has really, really, really made a big difference. And this has only been happening in our school since November because we just received the training in November. Um, pastoral care, it helps us keep an eye on that. I'm in the middle of Monaghan Town. I've got a lot of social difficulties amongst my children and their families. And their pastoral care is the most important element of their education for us. Without that, there's no point in looking elsewhere. And I have found that being part of this Action Team Partnership has given me time from the people around the table to reflect on the needs of the children in our care. Inclusivity, I've mentioned already, sorry. Sharing, the, the opportunity to share, very, very important. Assistance, just straightforward help. And that's what I've received this year. Straight forward help. And it's greatly appreciated. And guidance. And I need that guidance. And I don't know everything. 
and I've been a school principal for 14, 15 years, I think it's 15 actually, and I'm still learning. And I'll be learning until the day I retire, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And I'm far from being perfect, and my school is far from being perfect, but all we can do is try every day. So, I believe that if you have, I'm just finished here, if you have this consultation and guidance and trust in your action team partnership, what it actually leads to is an action plan, which is what this is all about. And that does actually happen. And what that leads to is a positive and carefully planned action, which is thought about and talked about and then proceeded with slowly but surely. And when all of that comes together, you have your successful learning community for the adults and the children in your school. And that's the experience I've had so far. And I know that the members of my staff and of the other schools will actually practically demonstrate that to you uh, later after me. So thank you very much. Garamila Mayhagov. Thank you very much, Anna May. So we're going to get into the schools now and see what's actually been happening. So the first school that um, is going to present is St. Joseph's Co-Ed School from Eastwall, Dublin 3. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lara Kyo. I'm the fourth class teacher in St. Joseph's and I was also the chairperson of our ATP team. Good afternoon. My name is Neil Heenahan. I'm the school principal in St. Joseph's in East Wall and two of our pupils are going to introduce themselves to you now. Hi, I'm Isabel. I'm in fifth class and my, my the highlight was making the anti-bullying t-shirt. Hi, I'm Hope and I'm from 6th class and today we're going to show you a short presentation on how the ATP works. My name is Hope and I'm from 6th class. Hi, my name is Dan and I'm from 6th class. Hi, my name is Isabel and I'm from 5th class. Hi, my name is Noel and I'm here in St. Joseph's School as well, where I'm a parent of these two, two of my children here. Hi, I'm Lara Kyo. I'm the 4th class teacher here at St. Joseph's and I'm also the chairperson of our ATP team. Hi, I'm Neil Hina and I'm the principal here in St. Joseph's East Wall. Hi, my name is Edel Curry and I work for Dublin Port Company. Hi, I'm Sinead Smith. I'm the Corporate Responsibility Manager with a and Body. So this is about mentors and helping you read, helping you read hard hour words. Like, really hard words could be called like really normal words that you'd use every day.
version in each class is being sent home to uh, every parent to uh, see what their children learn. We made our work inspired by Keith Haring for our anti-bullying logo. Hi, my name is Vida and this is my anti-bullying logo. The artist that helped inspire me to draw this logo was Keith Haring. He used to do um, kind of like symbol art, like which always represented some like and um, we're all together and um, work as one, trust, teamwork. Um, my design describes um, we're all in this together. And did you get to wear your t-shirt at Santry? Yes, I did. And I was very proud. Team. I like the way that we could uh, all join up together and make the school a better place. The ATP has been a fantastic initiative for our school. Um, I suppose as principal of the school, one of the best things about ATP is that it's very much linked to the JESH plan that we're doing. Um, really, really good that way in relation to literacy and numeracy and behavioural goals that we have as well. That's really, really positive. Um, it's great to be involved in the ATP because it's good to get involved with um, school activities and just to generally be informed of, of, of the curriculum and, and what's going on in the school. I've been involved with St. Joseph's ATP programme and I think it's actually a fantastic programme to connect with the community, to connect the school and the community together. I like the idea that we could put all our opinions together and create something new. And I love being part of uh, ATP because we have had a relationship with St. Joseph's School um, for over two years now um, through the Suez Literacy Programme. So every week we've had um, our lawyers coming down to read with the, the, the children. So being part of ATP was just a natural progression and a natural thing for us to do. And um, we love being part of it given that literacy is one of the ATP goals, but also being um, a welcoming school is another um, goal of the ATP. And we're very much part of that as well. We're bringing down a team of lawyers Lawyers again in a couple of weeks' time to to help um, you know do some some work and um, some painting some gardening around the school too. I like that everybody listened to your ideas and didn't judge. Them. Um, best thing I think about the ATP was the voice that the students have. We have school councils and everything like that, but having the uh, children on the ATP as equal members with everybody else, I think, for me, has been really fantastic and that their voice was listened to and ultimately what the children say, we all have to listen to. I hope you enjoyed watching this video.
And now we'd just like to ask Mark Candon from, I always call it Larry's, so I have to actually look at this yeah, to work at <laughs> St. Lawrence O'Toole CBS School, Dublin One. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. We are the school around the corners, just the same. <laughs> the schools of Lawrence O'Toole. You are actually in the parish of St. Lawrence O'Toole's North Wall. Uh, we own the, uh, the patron saint of the diocese. Lawrence O'Toole's, and we visit, we, our fifth class visit OO every year where Lawrence O'Toole is buried indeed. And we tell the kids every year, you may not know the story, Lawrence O'Toole's went to OO to talk to Henry II because that fella Strongbow had Dublin under siege and it was really stressing us all out to bits here in the city. And he had to get something sorted out. But our man been real political and was busy fighting with the French over in the north of France and he wouldn't see Lawrence. So poor Lawrence had to stay in this little town called OO and wait to see the king, and the king wouldn't see him. And we always tell the kids that they named the town after his last words. And they say, what were they, sir? Ooh. <laughs> um, Anya and myself uh, were on a couple of committees together. I have to stick to time or she's going to actually hang me, so I better take off the watch. And she's right, too. We were on a couple of committees together. We were on the, 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 the Children's Mental Health Coalition and the, the other one there with the, what was the, the literacy, the, literacy with the, the testing one? And we'd be talking about this stuff, and I'd always be quenching about the poor. Mostly myself, I feel very poor in myself. But I'd be giving out with this at the other end. On just lots of dynamism and all the rest of it. So one of the issues that we would have spoken about, I think, was this issue of parents. And I would have said to her straight out, oh, yeah, the National Parents Council is are great for the middle classes. Very little to do with us in Denartwall. Thank you very much. And Annie was like, right, sonny, boy, Jim, I'll put that up to you. And she said to me, okay, well, what about this? This Judith Epstein idea. And I straight away, no, no more than was said here uh, previously about LMA, I just said, hang on, that, that, that's, that's a fantastic idea. Now, I had done a master's on another, another program, something similar called the, 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 the Schools Got a It was the Comer Project in the States. And the States do a lot of these things. And it is about energy. It's very simply about energy. It's like wind energy or solar energy. What you're doing is you're taking the energy that's out there around your school and you're giving it a structure to draw it together and that actually potentially can be the brilliance of this thing. Now because we're Irish the first thing you hear said is Jesus lads it'll never work here it's one of them American ideas I'm thinking that's not going to happen at all <laughs> and we did straight away but I will say this I'm principal 15 years I actually know because I count the days <laughs> and, and when I when I went to O'Toole's, it's not a big whatever. It's a senior boys' school in Sheriff Street. That in itself says enough. But it had actually failed utterly and completely for twenty years. And my my principal actually, I taught another inner city school himself, and a schools inspector who was chairing us at the time. And somebody else sat me down and told me, "Your life will be over. Your marriage will be over. Your career will be over." But I've always felt I'm a teacher. I don't have a career. I have a I have a I have a bit of a vocation and a job. But it can be done, it can be done, it can be done, it can be done. And that was done. If there's a will, there's a way. And what we're taking out of this, this American idea, because they do have good ideas. God bless them. But they do. And they've loads of money. And they spend that money putting the good ideas together. So all we have to do is just read the stuff they have, look at the websites, and sure, off we go. And that is the bits. The problem I had for years, because my parents, and you'll have heard this said, you know, the parents of the children I have, they're the ones who had the poor education. They're the ones who are not included in the system. They're the ones it's hard to draw into the school. You don't put a, I did this, because I'm a gobshite. Oh, yeah, the school plan, lads, let's work on the school plan. Sure, I was chasing people away. I think that's most people though as well, in fairness. But, so I, I was learning from this. What this thing does is, and I'm repeating what was said, gets people around a table, and it's action-based. Let's do something. On the hell, let's do something together. Let's work together. Now, our little ATP has, again, under the structure, 15 people. We have somebody from Citigroup, because we've worked with them for the last 15 years. 
We have somebody from the ASESP, which is the After Schools Education and Support Programme. Um, these are the community people. We have somebody from the North Wall Community Association. We have the school secretary, who's formerly a parent, and as school secretaries do, does actually everything in the school. That's worth doing, including keeping me in line. Uh, we have the homeschool links teacher. We have one of the SNAs. Are there two of the SNAs? I can never remember. But we have SNAs, and we have three kids, two from sixth and one from fifth. And they, they took on four ideas under these, these headings. We looked at the literacy, the numeracy. We looked at the behavioural thing, and somebody said, well, let's, let's jig up the assemblies again. And the last one is the garden. We have a roof garden. Um, and I said, OK, let's, let's, let's do something new with that or something different, and let's get in touch with the, the North Wall Women's Centre, which is now called the Community Association. So in all of this, they were looking to drag people in all the time. So what it does is, yes, it does give voice to people. It really does. It brings people in. It, it gives them voice. It gives them a chance to say, well, look, this is, this is what I'd like to see. This is, I think, what we should be doing. OK. So I think all of you have a general sense of this, yeah? You have a general sense of how this thing can work. OK, because I'm basically a negative person whose glass is half empty. I'm going to show you the threats to this, right? So here are the threats. Let's be fair about this. This is a threat to me in my role as a teacher. Sure, Jason, if you're going to go organising, what, what am I left doing then? What, what am I meant to be doing? And it will be a threat. So at the moment in our schools, I believe the ATP is some strange little project out here in the corner. So what, are they, what are they doing there? And it'll grow. One part of it that I'll talk about is, is in the oral language thing, the oral language piece we did, we decided to do a Toastmasters with kids. So the parent who was meant to speak here this morning but had a bereavement, I wasn't meant to be here at all. I was to work with her and she was to talk supported by the homeschool links teacher um, but what they did was they came up with this idea because our kids again would be very shy about standing up in front of groups of people and speaking and we feel that one of the things we want to do it's again the Americans I just love these Americans you know show and tell yeah so so to do that to get fluency for a minute I don't know if you've ever tried to stand up and speak for a minute and, and get one thought to travel after the other by looking at a big group of people it's kind of scary so to try and get the kids to do that. And, and they sat down in a group and they, they drew in straight away the class teacher, which I thought, well, that's, that's a wonderful development of it. And they set a goal to improve the vocabulary and fluency of the English language uh, when speaking aloud, to develop, do this by developing an adult version of, to or a child's version of the adult program Toastmasters. The target classes were fourth and fifth. They had the team members were the uh, Tara from City, Adam, who's in um, fifth class, and Adrian, who's a parent and actually works here with the, the, the home visitors. If I didn't say that, Beth would have my life. Hi, Beth. Um, and so what, what the programme tried to do was, during English on Tuesdays, the teacher spent five minutes asking the boys to brainstorm, write down table topics for short speeches later in the week. A number of boys were then selected to speak on the table topics on a Friday during English time. And on Friday, the form, it's, they call it speechcraft. Each student is then to speak for a minute and prepare a chosen table topic without any aids or handwritten notes. I'm actually using handwritten notes. They'd be disgusted with me if they were watching me. They have a timekeeper who lets them know when the time is up. I'm waiting for this, you see, exactly. And um, they have a grammarian. Very interesting, a grammarian. They're called the word wizard. That's because when we speak, a lot of the time we're going, um, uh, uh, because we're trying to think of what we want to say next. And it is to, it, to help the fluency. So all of these things in that little project, they're, they're drawing attention to that and they're analysing and reanalyzing. Look, that is, and then they have this two stars and a wish thing that, uh, uh, that they award to themselves. They have discussions around it. So it's inclusive, it's democratic, and they're enjoying it. So my vision and where stuff works best, our school works really, really, really well and was an absolute disaster zone 15 years ago. And why it works well is everybody has voice. And what this provides to us, this ATP structure, is a structure for that. It is a practical meat and potatoes, dig the old earth out of the ground way that we can bring people in and say, look at lads, sit down there now. You're looking at the school plan. What is it we need to improve here? And let's go ahead with it. So I hope that's of some assistance to you in understanding what's going on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. And finally, but not least, we have um, St. Louise's Girls National School in Monaghan.
Hi, we are here on behalf of St Louis Girls to speak about our implementation of the Action Team Partnership with our school. This pilot started on the 21st of November and consisted of the principal, two teachers, two support staff, one external support, a community representative, six parents and three students from the council. And the initial training was delivered by Deidre O'Sullivan and it was delivered over two evenings um, on the 21st and 28th of November. Um, our initial training focused on our one year action plan uh, for partnership under the uh, goals set out previously spoken by Anya. These were um, two academic goals, one behavioural goal and one sustaining a partnership climate. Uh, having the guidance of these templates and goals, the group decided to follow the following ones. Academic, oral language, mental maths, behaviour, challenging bullying behaviour, and finally partnership, uh, making the school a more welcoming place. These goals will be discussed in greater detail uh, by Mia, Fiona and Aurelia in our presentation DVD, which will follow. Overall, the group felt that this training gave a very clear vision to us as a whole school community on what areas we should focus upon and what actions to take to achieve realistic goals. It was evident uh, from, uh, by focusing on these particular actions and themes that our objectives could be met and also to ensure the better outcomes for our students. Following on from our initial training, we then led to our interactive training session, which took the form of a web conference. This conference was attended by David, myself, Neve, and Anna May, who spoke earlier. The conference was facilitated in the Monaghan Education Centre, our local education centre, where they allowed us to use their IT facilities. The conference itself was delivered by the founder of the Action Team Partnership, Dr Joyce Epstein. This was wonderful as she, she herself was able to give us her ideas and beliefs that laid behind this partnership. Schools involved took from America, Australia, ourselves in Ireland and some from other parts of Europe. The conference itself was led through the form of templates and online discussion. Although we had already, as David had explained, done up our one-year action plan, the templates that were provided on that night allowed us to focus into small areas of our actionship plan and allowed us to see what we had done, where we were at the minute, and what needed um, attention in the, in the near future. There was two forms of advice and support on the night. We had advice and support from Dr Joyce herself and from her team of experts around her, and also other schools. And this was the interesting part because not all the schools that were involved in the conference that night were at the same part of their action team partnership. There were schools that were just setting up their committees, there were schools like herself who had just written down our action team partnership and were getting started, and then there were schools, particularly those in America, who had actually completed their part of the action team partnership and were starting to evaluate and to see where to go from there. So it was a world of wealth was um, distributed among and people were able to help each other out. With regard to the evaluation of our ETP in St Louis Girls National School, we have found it to be very worthwhile for three main reasons. The first being that we've had realistically achievable goals. And this is obviously very important in the success of any programme that you try to roll out. The second is we've had continuous monitoring throughout the process so far, both by Deirdre, who facilitated our initial training, and by Anya herself, both who have emailed us and texted us and offered us support. And when you're starting and to roll out a new thing in a school, it really is important that you have that support and you know it's only a text, a phone call, or an email away. We have also found that it's a practical approach in relation to benefiting the whole school community. And you'll notice when we put on our DVD in a few minutes that when we tried to um, elaborate on our oral language and mental maths, we wanted it to be as practical as possible. With the introduction of the Action Team Partnership, it has opened our school to new voices, opinions and ideas. We are now working together as a community to build positive partnerships, giving a positive experience for the whole school. On a personal note, as a teacher on the committee, I find that it's opened both my eyes and ears to voices and ideas I wouldn't normally be exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. I have thoroughly enjoyed working on this committee. It, I feel it really complements our school motto, a fun place to learn, a fun place to grow. I would encourage you to implement this in your schools if possible. It has realistic, achievable goals and you really will see good outcomes. I'm now going to pass back to Anya, who's going to put on a DVD where some of our other committee members will talk about our active partnership plan and you'll see its work in place. Thank you for listening. Gurmila Malgav.
The Action Team Partnership is a wonderful opportunity for our school and we are delighted to be one of the three schools piloting it in Ireland for the NPC which is the National Parents Council and the IPPN which is the Irish Primary Principals Network. As Maeve, our community rep, and Fiona and Aurelia, two parents in the school, will point out to you, a lot of work has been done already this year, even though the initiative began in our school in November. The benefits of having an action team partnership in the school are already becoming very obvious as parents, teachers, support staff and local community members work together to support the school plan and the general work of the school. Indeed, we feel very privileged to have 14 people working together on a monthly basis to support the school staff to provide the very best educational opportunities for the pupils in our school. My name is Fiona O'Gara. I'm part of the Action Team Partnership, which is a group of parents, students, uh, teachers, and uh, we were formed last November. Uh, we undertook some training and um, we meet uh, twice monthly. We are looking at uh, oral language, maths, anti-bullying, making school a more welcoming place. Um, we, as I said, we meet every second month. Um, we use the, our meetings as um, a forum for brainstorming and bringing ideas together. Myself and um, Emma Connolly, another parent, are looking at the ma maths element of the project. We're looking at time, money and measurement. We uh, have used the NCCA website as a tool to develop our um, tips for parents. We met with the principal and the two teachers of second class and we customised the tips from the, the website um, and it was a fully inclusive consultation. We've uh, looked at little things like um, when it comes to time, we look at counting on the calendar, looking at special occasions, maybe counting uh, up to birthdays or special events like Christmas, how long is left, how many days. Uh, we've, uh, in relation to the money element, we've looked at maybe going to the cinema um, and they bring a friend and how much would it cost for the two of them, how much change would they have out of a certain amount of money. So we have about 10 little tips on each element and then the last one was measurement. So we looked at the likes of um, how tall is your uh, tallest teddy or doll or what width is your widest school book. So it's all practical elements of time, measurement and money and the things that they will be doing in their everyday life. My name is Maeve Hackett and I came to the ATP programme via an invitation from the principal. I believe that this is because of my involvement within the community, both at an educational level and in other activities. My background is in manufacturing with emphasis on the sales and marketing. My experience was very much integrating education and preparedness for the world of work. The earlier this exposure takes place, the better, and this is one of the reasons why the ATP programme has such potential to expand the thinking and horizons of all involved. In our own group, I am struck by the commitment of parents, teachers and school administration. The active involvement of students is a great source of pride and it augurs very well for the future. The cohesion between home, school and community is the key to improving the success of the programme. To achieve uh, the goals will take much more time from an already stretched timetable with most of the effort involved in selling the concept to the wider community and bringing them on board. After about eight months I am now beginning to get the uh, concept of the ATP programme. So far we have linked our um, action plan with the school implementation plan and much discussion has taken place and is ongoing as to how best to implement. My name is Aurelia and I'm a member of an Action Team Partnership. For me, as a Lithuanian parent, I am very glad to be a part of it. This helps me to make a link with the school and it also informs me about the work in the school. This is especially important to me because the system in my own country is very different from the system here and I would like to learn as much as possible about the system in Ireland for my daughter Vanessa. One of the goals of Action Team Partnership is to improve our language in school. I have been helping to encourage this by giving drama lessons to second class. I really enjoy this 
and I learn every day from spending time with the children. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, a, lot, a lot of questions have come in. I've tried to not sort them out and see priorities, but perhaps um, I can ask the three questions from the three schools. Um, the first question, maybe St. Lawrence or two could kick off this one. Um, just how involved and how much input do the parents have in the ATP? So you've got the mic first. <coughs> Sorry, what's the question? Oh. <laughs> They complain about children not listening. <laughs> <coughs> Obviously, you have to improve the listening skills. <laughs> uh, just how involved and how much input do the parents have in the ATP? Um, the parents have quite a substantial input. Um, I suppose if we think of the, the model we're all used to in schools of a parents' association, that's what we all think of when we think of a parental involvement. Uh, but I suppose the benefit of the ATP is that the parents are sitting around the table with the teachers, the pupils, um, the members of the community. So it's, you're, you've got everybody there together as a united voice. Um, one key difference, and it is linked to the question, um, but I think it's something that has been referred to, but it is one major difference where there is a seismic shift in the culture of how we all view schools. So Lara Kyo, the fourth class teacher over there, who's the chairperson of the ATP in our school in St. Joseph's in East Wall, where there is a huge change for everybody is, it is not the principal leading this initiative. And as the principal in the school, that's something that's fantastic. From the point of view of, you're not the go-to person for this. It's showing a leadership model within the school that it's not just one person or one group of teachers. There's somebody linked in and that person will be the person who will uh, take everybody on in the initiative, call the meetings, um, chair the meetings, etc. So I think that is something hugely beneficial. If you're a parent, I think that's a huge plus because you're seeing a different model in the school and you may feel, okay, well, you know, I can approach this teacher maybe more before I can approach the principal perhaps over a certain issue. Um, and I think for the children as well. Well, they'll, they'll tell you yourselves what, what they feel about it, but I think that has been something that's, that's usually powerful. Okay, you can ask the um, St. Joseph's. Um, give the children... Very well, sorry. I got Lawrence or Lawrence or two. I don't listen to you. Yeah, so Lawrence or two. Yeah. Somebody needs to. Well, whoever wants to contribute to answer this question. Um, Got two years of the job, not 15. I, th I think St. Louis is a much, much safer bet coming from where they come from. Uh, maybe we could ask St. Louis then. Um, how did you ensure that the interest continued? It just wasn't a flash in the pan for a few months and it's still going and hopefully adding to it. I suppose the interest continues because everybody who's involved in it is absolutely enjoying it. And, and that's actually the whole baseline for, you know, the way that it's going to go into the future. It's, it is an action plan based activity, but it begins as a discussion and a think tank and it moves from there into action. And it's just not like other groups that you're part of. People come out actually saying that they felt very relaxed during it. Now, maybe not in the first meeting or the second meeting, but when people get to know each other, they just absolutely enjoy the meeting. And this was something that I, I suppose really, really helped me to think this is going to be great into the future because the people coming out of the meeting were saying, that was lovely. They're not going away with an agenda of work and they're not going away to organize a fundraising activity, and they're just going away with thinking, how can we further this? And then one or two people get involved in that little piece and move that on, and then their job is done, and maybe another piece is moved on to two other people. So it's not a huge volume of work, and we would hate to put that across, that if you get involved in this, you'll be going home with all sorts of stuff to do. It's think, it's discuss, and it's move forward in a simple plan. And you know that's what makes it interesting and what makes it viable into the future, because people actually thoroughly enjoy it. 
And just when Niall was talking, I so appreciate that this is nothing to do, it obviously has completely to do with the principle, but that we're not leading it, that is so important for us. But be patient when it has been set up in your schools, because just in the very initial part of it, the principle does kind of head start it off. And now, since it's been running in our school since December, I am just there as another person on the committee. But just at the very beginning, it takes a little bit of propelling from the principal. And after that, totally can move out. So, thank you. Okay, well. Uh, it just reminds me to thank very much indeed for people who have come along this afternoon. They've had an interesting year with it, but at the same time, they've shared with us a lot of their. Um, how it's gone for them, and, and I think what we've heard this afternoon has been a very reassuring tick towards the uh, initiative that was taken. But thank you very much indeed to the three schools, and very much appreciate all you were given something very small. And that's it for the moment. Thanks, Sonia, and thanks to the chairperson. Just to be aware of initiatives, there's, Anya said this to me the other day, there's no end of initiatives, right? And uh, the question was asked there, uh, how do you keep it sustained? You don't, you're, you're standing on the other side trying to hold it back a little bit. Because the impetus of people being involved is, is that they get great enthusiasm for it. Now, if schools take this on, be aware of this. Did anybody here grow up on a farm? But yes, there's not one of them in my head now, huh? Yeah, we, we got fierce cosmopolitan all together in this country. Well, do you see, if you ever drove cattle, right, there's always one out in front, there's always one in the ditch, and there's a few at the back, and most of us are kind of in the middle. That's how this is going to work. If this, if this gets rolled nationally, or as more schools come into it, okay, you, you'll put your own stamp on it. And it's, it's not a race, lads. It's not a competition. There'll be some out in front. There'll be some of us checking the potholes at the back. There'll be some in the ditch. Uh, <laughs> but that's the point of it. Give it time. We started this year, and I think we spent the year. It was a bit of a rush, wasn't it, getting into this. Well, we're kind of going to do next year, really, this year again, so to speak. And that was our, yeah, repeat. That, that was kind of our, our, our agreement. So just be aware of that. We're not in a hurry. Should we be in austerity for at least another decade? So I want to go nowhere quick. Um, you'll notice difference there that we did the questions straight after the group because people have to get back to Monon and, and everywhere else. So we're going to say goodbye to this group of people now. So thank you very much for coming and sharing your experience. Thank you.